everyone, Alex and Eric, who's mic'd up for this video. We hey, are... everybody, dual mics, so nobody can complain. We're fancy, guys. We are a year three Oklahoma flower farm that sells retail market bouquets from our roadside stand. It is almost the end of April, and so it's time to do another field tour. But it's almost funny because the last time we did a tour, it was before our season started in mid-March. And now we've already finished tulip season. We just wrapped up ranunculus season and we're kind of in a little bit of a lull while our May flowers get ready and our early summer annuals and all of that. But it's still worth it to walk around. You can see what things look like, what we've planted, all of that fun stuff. After we do the walk around tour and everything, we have a really fun and special announcement of something we've been keeping secret that I'm gonna share with you at the end of the video. So I'm gonna make you watch me tour our farm, but then you'll find out about it. So stick till the end. As a recap, we are in our caterpillar tunnel from Farber's Friend. It is 14 or 16 feet. <laughs> Neither. It's 15 by 90. It's the 14 foot. We stretched it to 15. Oh, that's right. Okay, so it's 14. Eric stretched it to 15 by 90 feet. And we have 80 feet of ranunculus planted. We have some anemones and we also have some overwintered snapdragons. I know with like movie magic, it might look like, oh my gosh, guys, like look at all the flowers in the tunnel. Why is ranunculus season over? But when you get up close, no, we have some aphids, which is standard. We have just some like stems that are so thin that even though the bloom looks pretty, they're really hard to handle and they, they crack very easily. I don't want customers like breaking what they just bought. Things are tired. Ranunculus don't like temperatures above 80 degrees and the last five days have been like 89 degrees. So they're just hot, they're tired. They've been producing for about a month for us and I'm proud of them. I'm proud of us for growing them. They've done wonderfully. We've had great sales. The flower, it's Saturday, so the flower stand was open today and we sold 120 bouquets, which is our second biggest weekend so far this season. So the ranunculus have done wonderful and I'm okay with them saying that they are done. Why don't you show them what you mean? Since everyone always has questions about like, why aren't these good? Oh, well like this one, like from far away, this looks big and poofy, but up close, it's blown open. So like when you can see the center face, it's just from a maturity standpoint, it's old. And yeah, I mean, obviously some of these are like, I didn't get to it fast enough in harvest, but also some of them are just like this, like they're just so thin that this would be really hard to manage in a bouquet. And then like this one I could cut and use, but we're not gonna open the stand with 15 straggling ranunculus bouquets. Like I need a certain level of volume. So yeah, there's probably, I could probably cut a bucket worth in here, but we're pretty much done. Here are our anemones. We planted everything in November. The first anemone bloom was on our anniversary. It was February 2nd. And we've been cutting on these hard since early March, I wanna say maybe the second week of March. They've done wonderfully. They're they're still kind of producing cuttable stems. I mean, like I could cut this one and sell it, but we're also, we're just winding down. I think, I think they're tired. But if you're, at, if you're doing a calculation of most sellable stems per bulb or corm, anemones outperform ranunculus because they've just been producing for like six, seven weeks for us. Obviously an anemone looks very different than a ranunculus, so they serve different purposes, but from an investment and a usage standpoint, anemones turned out fantastic and we're gonna order more for next year. We're just gonna do a little better with our timing because we did have them blooming before tulips had started and it was kind of hard to sell just straight anemone bunches. I did sell some, but I'd like the timing to overlap a little bit better. What anemones did we buy? We bought um, Jerusalem Blue, Jerusalem pink and Maron, it's either Maron or Merton pink. 
I like Jerusalem better. It's supposed to be more heat tolerant, so that's why I went with it. It produced a ton of stems and it's just starting to wind down after we have had a bunch of 80 degree days. So I think the heat tolerance thing was accurate. So I'm gonna do more of the Jerusalem series. And then I bought, I can't remember what variety we also bought, but I wanted some other colors. Like I wanted some purples and whites and stuff. So I had to go outside that variety. So we'll see how they do next year. This section looks extra floofy, way more floofy than the other sections. And the reason is this small section here, it's probably about, what would you say? 50 corms worth is our aphid section. So from far away, it looks floofy and beautiful and you get up close and you're like oh that's why you can't focus yeah. yeah well i mean it's focusing on the one in front of it which is just as gross it's like oh that's why you can't sell that stem so this is our aphid section we are trying to combat it please don't ask me how because we're trying to figure it out ourselves it's hard to kill aphids it's hard to kill aphids in a tunnel if we figure it out we'll share it with you guys but we're experimenting with various organic options that we've researched. Does Bug Guy have a comment behind the camera? Yeah, we're doing Piganic with a good surfactant. We're going to do a double hit. I got to do another one tonight. So we got to film this tour. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we're got things to, to do. Use the pyrethrum I method. know, we're trying, we're trying. Okay, this section here I am so proud of. So if you remember from our early March tour, I told you how I had really bad timing with plugs that I got in January and I planted these poor guys out like I don't know five days before like our arctic blast came and they just looked horrible and sad and tiny and burnt and I just was like they're never going to do anything and then lo and behold I grew like snapdragon trees I mean they are huge and when you see our field snapdragons it's like they're completely different flowers the tunnel snaps are that much better. If I cut one of these from the base, it would be like three feet in stem length. That's how tall they are. And the stem itself is super thick. It is a focal in the bouquet. It's so big and impactful. We had them in our bouquets this week for the first time and people were really excited about them. So next year, I am gonna plant even more in the tunnel and I'm also gonna succession plant so I have a longer steady stream of them. And I'm not doing overwintered snapdragons anymore after seeing the quality of tunnel snapdragons. Oh, and the variety, because people will ask, the variety is Costa. So this is the Costa mix I went with because I didn't know what color I wanted, so I just did a mix. And here we are. So I'll show you here at the front of the tunnel, but here at the end, this is Madam. I think it got hit by the cold that I mentioned a lot harder and it's not recovering as well. It also just might be a variety issue that's not as tough and Costa just really liked its life. So I'm really happy with Costa. This is Madam. I will get some stems. Don't look at the weeds. It is what it is, but I'm just glad. I didn't think I was gonna get anything and it was gonna be a really expensive plug box fail. So I'm happy. Let's look at our final row. In the third row of our tunnel, what are our, what are our widths? The ranunculus row is three feet wide. Row two is four feet wide. This row is three feet wide. We have our lizzies. So we grew lizianthus in the field last year. Lizianthus are typically grown in a tunnel, but we didn't have a tunnel in year two. So we just gambled with field lizzies. I thought they did great. They were a cuttable length. Everyone loved them. They were super happy. But then I saw pictures of people's tunnel lizzies and it was like a third longer stem and they were even bigger blooms. And so I was like, okay, well, we just need to move them inside, give them that fancy real estate. So we have our lizzies planted. We ordered six trays of lizzies. I did three lizzies in group one and three lizzies in group two. The groups largely you plant them at the same time but they bloom at different times so group one is first group two and then group three so i have group one and two here planted and i can already tell that they're happier in the tunnel they're putting on a lot of growth not a lot of growth they're lisianthus they grow super slow they but, did nothing last year for the first couple of months yeah. they just sat there <laughs> we had so many conversations where eric looked was like, like this they, looked, they just like stayed Point, point to one. They just stayed like this for like three months. Yeah, we had so many conversations where you were like, are these alive? They're not doing anything. Right. But these now are not like, alive. Now they're already yeah, like, putting on extra growth. 
monster growth for Lysianthus is like one new leaf. Well, how long have these been planted? Um, three weeks, yeah. two weeks. So it's clear that they're happy here. And they're on the east side of the tunnel. And so it's a little bit cooler and not as much direct sun right now, which is good because Lizzie's want a little bit of a cooler start before they're fine with it really heating up in June and July when they'll start blooming. So I think it's a good spot for them. I think they're really, really happy and no complaints so far. Okay. So right outside the tunnel, on the north side of the tunnel, is our peony field. We put in these peonies in November. We invested in like a full field. I think the final number ended up being 435. It's a combination of like 2-3-I, 3-5-I, and 5-8-I. So that's kind of why you see a bunch of different sizes in the growth because they're not all the same. But peonies take forever kind of hard but most of them came up they look relatively good considering we live in Oklahoma and Oklahoma is just hard it's hard on perennials it's hard on plants but because we did spend some more money on five eight size peonies from Ownings some of them are blooming and I know you're not supposed to let them bloom blah 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 peony police come arrest me I'm letting a couple from each variety bloom so I can see the bloom. I'm not letting everyone bloom, but I want to see it. So like, look here, this is, this is Duchess. Duchess is a white peony and I let a couple of them bloom, but I just wanted to see it. And the plant is happy. It has tons of growth. It's fine. And we have a couple more. We have angel cheeks down there and we have a Sarah sending up a bud. And so, okay, it's not a lot of them. I've done a lot of pinching and dis, not pinching, but disbudding. What happened here? What? What happened here? Oh, in this empty section. So you live in and learn your own property. Land is rarely completely flat. We are on a bit of a slope that starts north and heads south. And the way we oriented the rows wasn't the smartest. We should have done north-south instead of east to west. And it's clear that when it gets really wet and we get a lot of rain, the runoff kind of like channels right through this section and then goes out into the cow pasture. And unfortunately, it just was when we'd get a ton of rain, it was too boggy and wet for too long because of our clay for the peonies to be happy. And so we had to pull them out in this like section. Our current plan is I think Eric is going to build like raised boxes in this section to lit and we can replant and lift up the roots a bit. So when we get that like wash out, it's a little bit easier on to do something the roots. Like We're going to try to do complete. something. Who knows, we're theorizing about another peony field because now we're realizing with our like demand and interest that by the time these mature, it's not gonna feel like enough and then you're reset another three years. That's the gamble with peonies. It's not like the next year you can just buy more bulbs and fix your problem or make adjustments. It doesn't work like that with the peonies. So you really have to think long-term. Sometimes you have to gamble. So we'll see what we're gonna do. But the fact that it was so hard to plant these and we were so tired at the end of November, but to see them all coming, oh my gosh. It's like a vulture, but its wings were like the Lion King. Yeah, it's big old. Gross, stay there. over there. What was I saying? I'm just happy to see them all come up and this field be green after that very hard couple weeks of planting. But this is our peony field. Show me the last color. Oh yeah. Um, so it's like it, peonies always fade colors as they age. And so this is a not yet open angel cheeks. And so the big leaves will open and then it'll be like a cute little puff in the middle. And then as it gets older, like this one is open, it kind of fades to like a white light pink. So these were the couple angel cheeks I let bloom because I wanted wanted to see them. I know what a Sarah We have burn. a bunch of these in the house and whoa, oh they are aromatic. We'll put a picture on the screen so to show because they smell so much. I think it's the angel cheeks that has the best smell. It's Duchess, 
and angel cheeks and couple Alexander Flemings. I want to be a total dude about them and say that. What? I don't always love their smell. Well, if you're sitting right next to it and it's like... Next to them, my brain starts to go, okay, this is the flower. But like when I'm walking through the house, I go... Oh, well, you're just so negative. (laughs) You are so silly. Okay, let's go look at... So we have one big annual field and then we have our sunflower field. It's on the far north side of of our farm, right by the flower stand. And we're in the process of planting it out for summer annuals. And then we have some overwintered stuff blooming that we can show you from that field tour in March when nothing was blooming. So row one was our tulips. So we had our raised bed tulip box. Tulip season is done. We've pulled stuff out. We've broken down the boxes, the boards, stored them away and Eric has tilled, and this row is going to be flipped for more sunflower successions, is what it's going to be used for. In row two, we have larkspur and bupleurum. We planted these in the beginning of November, and while it's not a complete fail, I learned that this is not a happy happy place for bupleurum. It is getting wetter feet than I think it's happy with. And so because of that, I think a lot of the growth has been stunted. And so the stems are a bit shorter than is useful for us in our wrap bouquets. If I was making like small jar arrangements or like a florist making like a smaller deal, the stem length would probably work out. But I want most of them to be this height, like this one is. It's not ready to harvest, but this is a good height because then I can cut it, you know, down here in the wrap. But a lot of them are more like this height, which is useless to me. So I just think it was largely a location issue because I have bupleurum that reseeded itself in the raised garden, which is a raised garden. It's a fluffy soil. It's raised up. It doesn't stay wet and boggy in the clay at winter time, and it looks so much healthier than these guys. There's just a location problem that I'll fix next year. It will be usable, but definitely not like what I had hoped for or would would really expect from it. The same is true for our overwintered snapdragons right here. We planted these in November and we planted a Chantilly. This is Chantilly salmon. And then we planted a two trays of Madame Butterfly mix. You saw the tunnel snapdragons. <laughs> this is completely different. My... And these have been growing a lot longer. Yeah, these have been in like two months longer than the other ones, but... but they went through an incredibly cold period yes. of time. They were not in like a... Oklahoma I know. Cold. They were not in like a snuggy tunnel. They have to deal with way more wind temperature fluctuations. Obviously we haven't done the the greatest job on weeding. It again, it's not a complete like cry into my sheets pillowcase fail. I'm cutting on it. I use some of them in our bouquets um, our bouquets this Saturday. Basically it's not what it should be but we'll get by and it was a lesson learned. And the big lesson learned is I'm just not gonna deal with the struggle of overwintering snapdragons. I'm going to allocate in our crop plan that they just go in our tunnel and I'll have a good handle on the timing or another tunnel. Oh my gosh. I can't even process that right now. No, stop it. We can't even, no, we're not talking about that right now. But yeah, I want these to be better next year because I really need April flowers towards the end of April when the ranunculus are starting to wind down. I need to be drowning in ginormous snaps and not like snap twigs. I want snap trees, not snap twigs. So that's... Like it's a snap dragon and then what's like a baby dragon called? Like a, a like snap, a snap lizard. A snap lizard it's versus a snap dragon. so much smaller. snap dragons. Yeah, snap, snap dragons. These are snap lizards. Code word. Right. Snap lizard. Just code word snap lizard. But that's one of the things why when Eric and I talk on our channel a lot about like going slow, learning, making wise choices, and not like 
going crazy your first year or two is there's so much to learn and this is year three and we're nowhere near dialed in i mean it's going great we have tons of flowers we're selling it's wonderful, but there's still issues. Like I learned I'm not gonna plant blue plurum here. I learned that I want tunnel snaps, not field snaps. Like we're, for, we're making constant corrections. And when you're not over planting and over spending, when something doesn't go well, it's not as painful and it's not as big of a commitment when you need to make an adjustments um, when you learn something. So let's show more positive stuff. So, I mean, they're fine, they're just not great. Oh, but the larkspur. The larkspur is great. It hasn't started fully blooming yet. I like the height, especially these tall boys. When they elongate with their blooms and I can do a nice deep cut and it's a nice thick stem for the wrap. I really like that. They'll give me some side branch cuts. They're happy. They're happy. They're probably gonna I'll bloom. Oh yeah. They're probably gonna really get going in early May, mid-May for like full color but I did a mix. So we have like this pinkish, uh, not pink, it's bluish purple. We're gonna have some pinks, like some bubblegum Barbie pink. Well, this is more Barbie pink, and then this is more bubblegum pink. And we'll probably have some like whites. So I think it'll be really cheery spring colors for our bouquets in May. And they'll likely go mainly with sunflowers is what the combo in May is going to be until we have our peonies. But here is something I am very happy with. These are snapdragons, but these are um, Potomac variety, different colors, but it's Potomac. I planted these guys out maybe two weeks ago from plugs, and they are so happy. They have put on probably triple the growth from when I planted them. And last year I grew Potomacs, planted them out at the same time and they bloomed in June. They were awesome. I loved my summer Potomac Snapdragons. And so I'm hoping based on how this row looks right now that we're gonna have a repeat of that because these were primo and not snap lizards. I was just gonna pause for you. Well, I was just looking over here. These look like they've started to bounce back. Yeah, it's just, I think, some, I think we need to like fluff. push the fabric down a little bit so they can like kind of get out of the holes a bit. There was a glad growing here. Oh my gosh. Look, you ready? So it's like. Yeah, this was the glad yeah. row. This was a bit Is it on? Yeah. Okay, so this is status. Again, I did a mix. You're probably noticing a pattern. Overall mixes I think are great in the beginning when you're trying to like learn what colors you really like or if you're just selling in a retail environment. And like since I do plugs, I don't want to have to do like 200 of one color and 200 of another and that's all I get in my 400 row. But I want like blue and yellow and pink and purple and white but I can't fit the plug tray size of each individual color. That's usually why I do mixes often. And so this is status. This is way more status than we grew last year, but I loved our status last year. It bloomed in June and into July a little bit. Tons of stems, good height. I know it's good for drying. I'm not really into the whole like dried flower hoarding thing where you lie to yourself and think that like, well, if I don't sell it, I'll just dry it. I was actually telling Erica I had an idea in the stand today. And instead of me or us doing the labor of drying it and needing the logistics to hang it and do all that and sell it dried, I was thinking if I'm like drowning in status and need to move the stems, I can make status bunches. So let's say 15, 16 stems for our $25 price point, but advertise it as like dry your own. So I'm selling you fresh flowers and then people that are really into that whole craft they can deal with it as they want they can try drying it and crafting with it and blah 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 I don't have to do it so we'll see if that ends up happening or I might just need every stem for our fresh bouquets we'll see what happens okay so that was row I just showed you five so now we're at row six and seven we have planted these are our zinnias we do two successions of zinnias because we close in August because of the temperature, the bug pressure, 
the lower purchasing activity. So I don't need three successions because I'm not trying to get August, September zinnias. So I planted these last week, I wanna say. And in three weeks, I will plant the next two rows. And so I should have June zinnias, July zinnias, fresh, big, beautiful, not covered in powdery mildew or being dramatic. And then when we close in August, Eric will likely just mow it down and we'll be done with zinnias. Our customers love zinnias. These first, this first succession, so our rows are 60 feet. So we have 120 feet of zinnias. I didn't do a mix for these. I picked colors that would go with our status and our pastel Potomacs. So it's not super bright saturated colors yet. It's more like softer pink, softer purple, softer white to go with those flowers. And then in July, when I plant these out, it'll be orange and dark purple and fuchsia and deep pink, like those kind of colors. But Eric tilled these rows. We haven't put drip down or landscape fabric. We're slowly working on it, but I'm not planting this out until the till Mother's Day week on my schedule. So we have time to get those logistics done. And then the last row is going to be marigold and basil. And I'm just doing one succession of it in the field. And that will bloom in June and July for us. I didn't mention this, but when we were in the tunnel, in the middle row in mid-June, I'm gonna plant celosia and marigolds. And that will grow and be fine in our hot tunnel and bloom end of August into September when we reopen and have sunflowers. And so the bouquets will be sunflower, celosia, and marigold. So instead of succession planting here in this field, which we wanna just shut down in silage tarp in August when we're done, we'll have like one row in the tunnel that can handle the heat to go with our sunflowers. But let me show you where we grow our sunflowers. So we have, I showed you our annual field. We have another separate field that's all for sunflowers. And they're also, they're about a 40, how long are they? 40 foot rows. And every week, Eric's sunflower man. So I'm kind of like talking for him here. That's me, the guy behind the camera. That's right, log sunflower in, sunflower, sunflower man. man. Well, cause you got your Jang cedar now and it's all dialed in, but we have- 500 sunflowers in like three minutes. It's amazing. Jang cedar for the win. But we have, we basically, Eric, there's no we here, plants every week another row of sunflowers. And then once row one is done and we've cut on it, we will mow it down, flip it, and then we'll repeat again through the field. So in theory, once they start blooming, every week we have a row blooming and then at various stages. In March, we gambled and planted sunflowers much earlier than last frost. The soil was under our silage tarp, which was keeping it a bit warmer, which helped, but it was a big gamble and we weren't sure what was gonna happen. But the reason we gambled is until our peony field is really going, it's super hard to have early May focal flowers because it's too hot for tulips and ranunculus and it hasn't been warm enough yet for our summer annuals. But do you want flowers for Mother's Day? It's like, oh my gosh, like how do we fill this gap? And so we're like, well, let's gamble on sunflowers. So this is yeah, our- some hairy, hairy days too. We had the frost blossoms. Well, we covered them. I mean, oh my gosh, covering sunflowers, like what? But it's worth the gamble for what it gives us. So this row here next to me, I'll stand in them so you can kind of get a height. But this is our gamble row. They're growing, they're happy. I like the size. I like the amount. So, the dream and hope is still alive that these will bloom by Mother's Day. If they don't, we still have, if you want to show, a beautiful field of sunflowers at various points. That's the farm. We produce a lot on a small amount of space. I sometimes see farms that are younger or just not profitable yet with so much more than we have but their sales seem very similar. And so I want this to be an encouragement that you can actually grow a lot of flowers on a small space. Our farm is actually smaller than a quarter acre of what you saw. And like I said, we sold 120 bouquets today. That all came out of that tunnel, that one row you saw and the snapdragon trees. That's what made the bouquets, not any of this other stuff in the field. 
So you can grow a lot, you can sell a lot from a small space. You don't need an acre farm to do those sorts of numbers. I promised a big special announcement here at the end. It's actually not flower farming related, although it will affect flower farming. But so many of you have actually been following us since year one. I get so many comments where people are like, I feel like we know you guys or we love listening to you guys and all of that. So we did want to share this with you. Some of you might have already guessed or been suspicious, but it's a little bit awkward to like ask or say anything, especially if you're wrong, because you're like, is Alex just getting a little chubbier? Like what's happening? But does it show up? I'm like pushing it out a little farther. Baby we're pregnant. Five. I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. we're, we're pregnant with number five. Number five. So we've got four kids. They're 10, 8, 6, and 4. So we obviously had a gap, but we're pregnant with number five. That means we've done this whole spring season in the first trimester because I'm four months pregnant. So that was interesting. We found out in February was it yeah. in February so pretty much all these videos all of this spring season has been done during the first trimester very nauseous um, this will not be a pregnancy while farming channel but you also are going to kind of see what it's happens a little too obvious it's hard to hide. Yeah, it's a little hard to hide it the angles are getting a little harder but the timing is wonderful because babies do in October after our season is over it's like a last frost baby even Ooh, with the timing baby. frost baby so it's gonna be tricky i'm probably obviously going to be a lot more tired so that'll be interesting but from a family perspective we feel blessed and overjoyed at this sweet little surprise that gets to join our farm so thank you all for watching um thank you for those of you that's been with us for a while and that are actually genuinely excited about this surprise for us because that does mean a lot and for those that are new i hope you follow along on our year three flower farm trying to really hit some big numbers which seems possible for us this year so it's very exciting you have anything to close with <laughs> mike man I know we have two mics now, so hopefully this comes through good and clear. We're trying a whole new setup, but yeah, yeah. we're pumped and uh, blown away by the spring. And we're hoping that the spring sells itself and then we're summer because we're right up here next to the stand. We'll hopefully sell people to come by and yeah. see all sorts of God's creation here. Yeah. Beautiful flowers. But so. now that we've told people, I can like fully exhale. You can exhale a little. And not have to do like interesting angles <laughs> how much how many tours will we do where you're huffing and puffing yeah we might really? have to take there might be more edit july breaks. <laughs> no july with july a july pregnant farmer is trimester. going to be interesting you might have to do more edits of me taking breathing breaks breathing breaks but... <laughs> maybe it's some some less continuous editing flow yeah it's gonna be we should fun. talk about last year's it's sunflower gonna be like exciting this. oh yeah that's a reseeded sunflower because look it's like as thick as a broom handle. I probably should have pinched it because it's not doing its neighbors any good, but it's shading them out. We felt really excited when we saw germination, so we let it go. But I should take some of them out because they're being a little bit greedy. Yeah, they're taking up a lot. Good of idea. But yeah, that's right. it. This is April, and we need to figure out how to get more flowers end of April, early May next year. But yeah. Gap problem. Lessons learned. Year four will be those more dialed in. There, just get going. Their time. Get going. Those are going to be year five peonies. Oh so we need to figure out year more four. More I know. More. But thanks, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.